Hi everyone, it's Zoe here from Zoe's Pixels and today I am going to share with you my technique in removing a harness and a lead and the owner in this situation. Um, and I, this is not my photo, it was actually posted on um, Facebook and the lady was asking if someone could help her uh, remove the the lead. It's actually a different image, but this is the image that she sent me. So um, I have her permission. Her name was Alex Marina and I decided to record this for her so that she can go ahead and take the step-by-step -step, um, process herself and give it a go. So to begin with, the um, I do like to do a bit of color correcting before I start doing editing. It gives the when I go into the editing or into Photoshop, I have sort of more detail to work with. Just It's just me. Um, so I'm going to start with it. It is very cool image. I'm going to start by getting my color picker and let's find a light area. So we can see the dog is very blue here. So just going to come in like so. It's definitely gone a very uh, greeny yellow here now. I'm just going to come in. It's, definitely, it's got green cast here as well. I'm going to fix that and try that. That's looking better. Sometimes you do have to um, go around to a few different spots to get the right color. And that's looking much better. See, that's a cleaner gray. It's probably still slightly blue. So what I'm going to do, you can see that there's a quite a big blue section up here. I'm going to start just moving the colors myself and I'm thinking that's a little bit better. All right, excuse me, I'm just going to cough for a moment. <coughs> oh, got something caught in my throat then. So also having skin in here can actually help you with your color correction as well, but that I'm pretty happy with that. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so we do have some very big highlights here. We can see that we've got some clipping at the top here. I'm just going to bring the highlights down. We'll bring in the white just so we can keep some of our pop. And I'm going to bring the shadows up so that I can see um, more detail in the dog's fur at the chest here. Also, Look, it's really a little bit underexposed, so I'm going to bring the whole thing up just a little bit like so, and then slide this down till we get rid of the clipping, and slide this side up to get rid of the clipping, because I think it was just under his chin here. Okay. So overall, I mean, like, we can definitely work with this now. I'm just going to have a look at the detail that we have here. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm going to just bring the contrast up. Actually, I'm just going to bring the blacks down. They sort of lost a little bit of detail there. Happens sometimes when I'm using the sliders at the top instead of the... There we go. That's looking good. All right, so that's going to give us something to work with. I'm going to just see how we've got this really big highlight here. Um, so another little trick that you can do, you can come into your um, HSL and go to the luminance and we can grab the little duvalaki here and let's just bring down that highlight just in those colors and that can really help and see how it's grabbed these sliders and just pulled them back a bit and so show, you can see how it's moved it here as well. So you can even do the same with that blue to try and bring the blues up if you wanted to. See how we can increase the brightness. No, it's not going to work here. So it must be a different, different color. So let's just, we can bring that highlight up. There we go. And then we can come in again and just bring some of this brightness down. We can even reduce the saturation just a little bit. And then that allows you to come up and add a little bit of contrast to the overall image. So, I mean, look, I'm not adding any effects here. I'm just trying to get it to look natural at the moment. That's looking pretty good. So I just want to see what sort of color we've got happening on the dog. And to me, that is a pretty good black. It's sort of like a warmer black but we haven't got really any crazy casting. There's a little bit of green casting here, but overall this is a tiny bit of a 
bit bit of a purpley color here maybe but overall that is pretty good all right in my opinion so everyone's got their own opinions but i think the greens even look a little bit better it's a bit yellowish maybe um but obviously your editing style can you know it's whatever whatever you're personally interested in right so now to the crux of this video let's go and head over to photoshop all right here we go so um, I've got my background layer here and what I like to do is the easiest stuff let's start with the easy stuff first and that is going to be removing the owner from the background and removing this lead so we're going to come in with the content aware tool and I'm going to I've got my lasso tool and I'm using the polygonal <laughs> of course I'd have to try and pronounce that but the one that does the straight not the drawing one so um, now I have a Wacom tablet and it is the best investment you can make if you do a lot of this type of editing. Um, I've had it for years and years and I could not imagine not having it. So I'm using my Wacom tablet right now. It makes it so much easier when you are drawing around things. Uh, oh, whoops, I should have come up further. There we go. So I'm going to just come in like so and we'll see what this content aware tool does. Now it's important to take a little bit of the dog as well when you're doing this. And the reason is, is because the content aware tool will try to create that line through there from the dog. So let's go up to the edit and then content aware fill. Sometimes it's just absolutely awesome right off the bat, but let's have a look and see what it's done. That's not too bad. We can work with that. Okay. It's not too bad even along here. Very good. All right. Cool. All right, so let's click OK. And I'm just going to quickly do a before and after. How good does that look? Like it's even copied all the lighting through here. It's done a pretty good job with the dog fur here. We'll tidy that up. But let's just zoom in so you can have a look. That is pretty good. All right, so things that I want to look for, are there any lines? that it's left like straight lines that I need to clean up. Yes, so let me show you. So we definitely need to get rid of that leaf. I obviously didn't go around it so it just didn't know what to do there. But see how we've got like this defined line here? I'll just zoom in to show you. So you can see here we've got this defined line. So we need to tidy that up. So the easiest way to do that is to come in with a cloning tool. And I'm going to grab this little section here as my, my starting point. I'm going to go up and copy that across here. And let's see, I've got a little bit of something going on here. So I'm going to just grab another section here. Okay, overall that looks pretty good. Just want to fix up the, the dog here, so I'm going to just come in here. And we're just going to move it back to sort of be in line with the rest of the dog. That looks a bit better. See how I've got like this repeating thing here now? I'm just going to grab a section from over here and break that repeat up and that's all I have to do it's got rid of that repeat now okay so we've got a little bit of a mess going on up here 
with these vines, but we'll fix those up and then we're going to do some copying of another. Oops, I'm just going to just change that. That was no good. Undo. I'm going to just change my uh, hardness back to 0%. On these background areas where it's really blurry, I'm happy to have my edges blurry. So I'm just trying to make these look like it makes sense. They're not just st stopping in the middle of nowhere. Let's zoom out. Oh my goodness. Why did I do that? Sorry. <laughs> Bit on screen. All right, let's have a look at what we've done so far. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. But we want to clean up this edge here. So what we're going to do is create a new layer. I'm going to come down. I'm just going to grab this section here and cover up. Oh, are you working? Oh, I must have something selected. So if you find that it's not, um, if you try to do a stamp and it's not displaying it properly, it usually means that you've got something selected and it could be like this tiny little pixel that you've got no idea about. So um, you can go to select and then deselect or um, just do what I just did then and you just quickly draw somewhere else and deselect it. Okay, so back to the stamping tool again. So we're going to click Alt and there we go, we've got it now. All right. I'm just going to cover up that little bit of her leg there. And now I'm going to do a duplicate of the background for the moment. And I want to merge these three layers together. We're going to merge those layers. Okay. So what I want to do is a copy of this and then take it up here. So we're going to come in, we're going to grab this like so. And we're going to do a copy and a paste. And it's pasted it to a new layer. We can now come up here and we'll put that. Just seeing where. Okay, we're going to throw that up like so. So, and then to blend it all in, because obviously we've got these lines, we're going to put a mask over it. Come in with the black and start softening these edges. So that is your first step and now we need to bring these leaves back in. So we're going to soften around these leaves in the foreground here. And let's have a look. How does that look? So that looks pretty good. All right, so let's zoom in just a little bit. And fortunately, like we're working with an area where the background is really nice and blurry. So we can get away with a lot before um, you know, having to come right in and make sure that all the leaves look perfect and all the edges are great. So um, that looks pretty good. So see here, I took away too much. I'm going to come back with my white. Now, this is a great thing about working with masking because you're not using your um, eraser tool. You can come in and out with the different colors, the black and white, to do your masking. And you can keep refining it and figuring out what you want to keep and what you want to remove. Okay, that's looking okay. Still grab that little bit of red there. So let's just change the brush size. And that looks pretty good. You would hardly know unless you were really looking for it, you would have no idea that there was a lead there prior. So let's go to the original and back. How good does that look? All right, so that's that. Obviously, uh, the harness is the big issue here. And so to be honest with you, this is not a difficult one to do because we have 
all of this amazing chest area and the neck to be able to grab fur from and cover this one. If you've got a dog with long hair and it's all over the place, it can be harder. Um, and a dog with short hair is typically easy as well. Um, but yeah, if you've got a lot of area that you can grab fur from, you are in a good position. So let's just, I just want to merge these two layers together now. We're going to merge those. Okay. So I'm going to just tidy up this and you see how we've got this defined edge here and then it goes soft at the back here. I think I'm going to start with that first and we're going to do that with the cloning tool and then we'll do some content aware and see what the uh, software can do for this area and then we can make some modifications. So I'm going to start with a new layer, get my cloning tool and I'm going to change the hardness to about 50%. So that's just so the edge isn't too soft, but it's still soft that it will blend. I'm going to zoom in here. Um, I've got the cloning tool and we're going to take a sample from here. And we're going to bring that up to here and because we're going to try and build this up. like so and I can change my size at any time excellent now I don't want to go over that because I want to have as little um, stamping as possible so and that helps to uh, make sure that you don't end up with um, too many repeating areas okay so I'm just grabbing some sections just gonna increase my size wherever I need to grab another little area from over here like so and we'll just soften that there and so we're hoping that the definition is what is going to going to increase this a little bit. The defined area will be from the section where it's more in focus. Okay, so I'm just going to move up a bit now. And I'm going to have to start grabbing some area from here to replace this. So let's just bring it through. We grab some from the top here. I'm not too worried about that green. I just really want to have that defined edge. So I'm going to just come in now and remove that green. And see how I just created a repeating pattern there? I do not like that. So I'm going to come in straight away and grab this and we'll just replace that. Okay, that's looking not too bad. So now let's grab some of this here and bring that across to there. We'll grab some of this here. And I'm really trying not to create too many sections that are the same that's looking pretty good okay so let's just do a before and after so you can see what we've done you can see that we've still got a little bit of an area here of the buckle and i'm just going to grab some of this white here actually i'm going to just soften my hardness a little bit there feels like it was a bit too there we go, that's not too bad. Let's go again. How's that looking? That looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I think we'll just quickly fix this up over here as well while we're using this tool. And this is not the hard one. I'm just gonna 
Alt. Just bring that down here. And bring this up like so. We do that. And that looks pretty good. That looks pretty natural. All right. So let's merge these two together. And we're going to do the content aware tool in this section here. So I'm just going to zoom out so that you can see what happens. And I'm going to come through with the lasso tool and I'm going around this area here. Like so. Come in with the content aware fill. And I'm going to show you where we've got some problems. So we come up here and we've got all of this soft area here. And we've also got this really uh, focused area here. So what's happened is that I think it's actually pulling this from the dog head. So let's move, remove this section here which is more in focus than the chest and see if that fixes that area it does but we've still got this really soft area here so it's taking it from the back portion of the dog so let's get rid of all of this that's looking better but I think we need to just tell it we only want you to use the chest area for all of your selections. That's looking better. Okay. So I have just made the decision that I'm not happy with the way that I'm just going to open this a little bit. I'm not happy with the way that it's doing this edge here and I can probably do a better job myself. But um, I feel like I'm getting some green splotches in here. So I'm going to remove this section here. So I'm going to come into the lasso tool. I'm going to make sure that I have it on the subtract. And I'm going to tell it that I do not want it to replace this section here. Okay, so now I'm going to also come in here and I'm going to say, hey, look, I don't need you to worry about using this green section when you're making some decisions. So let's go have a look what it's done. And I think that is looking a little bit better. See how we've got none of those green splotches in here now? We do have some soft areas, but that can all be fixed with cloning. But a lot of the work has been done by the content aware tool. Okay, so let's click okay. I'm going to come and have a look. All right. So you can see here, if we go like this, it's not too bad. All right. I'm going to use a clone tool now. And let's start by fixing this little edge here. And I'm going to, I don't like this little spot here, so I'm just going to quickly get rid of that. All right. I'm going to reduce my hardness again to around about a little bit forty percent this time, and I'm going to come in. We're going to grab something from here and bring it up like so. I'm going to come up from this direction and come down like so. That's looking good. Now we need to fix up this blurred area, so I'm going to come straight down here. And then click this selection to copy and we'll bring this around about here. I want to grab this over here and I can make a little bit of a bigger area like so. Okay, I'm going to grab this section here and I'm going to grab some smaller areas over here and just begin to see it's still soft over here. 
So I'm going to bring a little bit of this in. We want to blend these through like so. Okay. So what's happening at the moment that I'm not too happy about is that as I'm copying my my brush that I've chosen to use is still a little bit too blurry on the edges. So I'm going to increase my hardness again. I'm going to bring it up to about 60%. And that should make my edges still a little bit blurry so that it does um, blend, but not so much that we're getting these great big soft areas. Okay, that's going to look a little bit better. Let's just bring that through. And then we can bring some of this down here. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to work in some smaller areas and start just breaking up stuff. Making it look a little bit more natural. Making sure that I don't have too many repeating areas. And this is what I was saying before, like we've got so much hair that we can work with to start bringing this all together and making it look like it's not repeating. So here I feel like I've got a repeating action. So I'm just gonna come in and break that up. Okay, feels like it's a little bit soft in here. Okay, I've got this line happening here, so I'm going to grab something from over here and just break that up a bit. Okay, let's see how it's looking. So, I feel like this little area here is probably not quite right, so we'll come back and just do it from a distance and just sort of have a get a feel for something. So I'm going to grab here, I think, just sort of, yeah, that looks a bit better. Does that look okay up front? Yeah, that's all good. All right, so essentially we are done. Um, didn't have to do really much masking. That looks good. All right, so I'm just gonna flatten that because I wanna show you something. And we'll do the merge layers. All right, overall I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's not too bad. We've got the sharpness line down here, it's soft there. There's not too many repeating things. Everything overall is not too bad. All right, so I wanna show you something um, just for cleaning up a little bit further. I think this here is a little bit distracting. So let's come in with the lasso tool. And we're just going to get rid of this line. And we'll see what it does. I'm just going to follow this all the way down here. I might also just come over here and grab this. Okay, do the content aware tool. So we've got content aware fill. And I'm happy with that straight away. Click OK. How cool does that look? All right, so I mean like such a great feature. So issues that we do have is that it's repeated this stick multiple times which we don't really want. Um, overall, everything else looks pretty, pretty good. 
even try to build that leaf there, which looks pretty awesome. Okay, that is a huge distraction that has been removed. I think that looks so much better. I even think that we need to remove this little section here. It's only because it's such a defined thing. Like if it was just leaves, but because there's a full on line, it does grab your attention. Um, so let's just come in and we'll do that as well. I probably should have done it all together. And we'll just come into content aware. You've got to make sure that you're actually on the layer that you want to want to replace. I'm just gonna click OK and see see what it did there. That looks pretty good. Whoops. Alright, so Alright, so I'm gonna just bring those two together. I should have done them both, should have done the whole section at the same time. But we'll merge that. Now is the important part where you just need to check if you've got any silly, silly lines, any straight lines that really need, that are standing out. Because if your customer is, you know, planning on printing this image, um, some things can show up. All right, so let's get rid of this stuff here. So we're gonna come in with the mask, with the cloning tool again. We're just gonna quickly grab something from here and throw it over there. Oh, it's not working because somewhere I have a select. So I'm gonna to go to select and click deselect. That is, that is one of the most funny things. Um, I was recently trying to do some cloning and I could not work out for anything why it was not working and it was because I had this tiny little pixel somewhere selected like this and um, yeah you just can't see it so you don't even realize it so if you find that your cloning tool is not working just go up to select click deselect and it will deselect that pixel wherever it was <laughs> all right so um, now I just want to tidy up this little section here so I'm just going to come straight up from here and throw that in there. You beauty! And here let's get rid of that stick. So that is looking way too... I'm going to undo both of those. We're going to just change the brush and soften that again because we're working with such a soft background we can get away with it. So we're going to come back and we'll throw that there. I'm even thinking, let's just throw this in here and get rid of this stick over here. I feel like it's a little bit distracting as well. See how it has created a repetition here? So I'm just going to grab this, throw that over there. And see, this is, keeps on grabbing my attention as well. So I'm going to grab some leaves and just throw it over that and just softening it. Um, all right, and this here keeps grabbing my attention, so I'm just going to throw this over like that. Good. All right, let's have a look at the image as a whole. Zoom out. Yeah, that is that is looking a lot easier on the eye. Now we've got these leaves here that are essentially there um, for no, no reason. So what we can do is we can sort of copy this and bring it up. So we'll do that. I might even just grab from over here. So let's do that. So I'm going to just create a new layer and I'm going to grab my cloning tool and we're going to come... Oh, did I accidentally press something there? Okay, I'm going to copy from here like so. And no, you not, didn't copy. Can we copy? We got it. All right. So let's bring this up here to soften this corner a bit. Like that. And we'll even sort of bring another section over here. So we've got these leaves here. like so that just sort of softens that a bit more 
that's not too bad. But what we're going to do, we're going to bring in a mask and we're going to remove some of it. So essentially make sure that I've got my brush selected. Whoops. So we're in the mask and I'm just going to remove some of this blur that we've created. Now the great thing about masking is the ability to change your mind. <laughs> so instead of just using the eraser tool, you're essentially using your masking tool, your masking layer to um, work out whether you want something to show or not. So here I want to soften, I want to remove that, it's too soft. So we're sort of helping to define that area that we just copied across. Whoops. Okay, so you are, I did accidentally post something here, so I'm going to delete that there. There we go. That looks pretty good. Whoops, that looks pretty good. Let's sort of help to soften that and bring all those leaves together. Um, yeah, I think that's looking good. So if we go to the original, so that was the original. And that's the new. So I don't know how long does this take? Probably 30 minutes. So obviously you'd only want to do this when um, the customer has chosen something that they want to keep. Uh, if you were to do this to all of your images, it would take too long. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully that has helped. Hopefully you've got some tips on um, using your mask, using layers, using the cloning tool, using the content aware tool. Um, Ideally, you want to try and make sure that you set up the dog and help the owner to set up the lead so that it's up behind um, and using the smallest collar that you can, the slip lead if you can, if the dog is not choking itself um, and lots of treats. <laughs> so the more that you can do when you are actually at the destination doing the shooting is uh, the, the best and it makes it easier for you in post but um, there's always ways around it with the fantastic software that we have available to us today. If you have any questions please ask me below and I will try my best to answer and hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Bye for now!